Hi, I'm Javier Santana, and I was born July 8th, 2001. My biggest achievement so far is definitely coming out freshman year. Um, I went to a middle school that wasn't very accepting of it, but once I came to Midi, I felt completely accepted and welcomed by my new friends and the community. And I think coming out has um, helped me to understand myself better. A piece of advice for my future self is to have faith in yourself. Um, you struggle with, or you used to struggle with self-confidence, uh, self-acceptance, and self-doubt. But I think by having faith in yourself, you have um, learned to accept yourself. And it wasn't always easy, but I think as over as time has gone on, um, you have gained a better under understanding of yourself and of who you are and who you are becoming. Even when you're feeling down or sad about yourself, if you continue to keep that faith, then I think it will help you in the long run. So this is interview number one. This is my mom. So how do you know me? You're my son, my firstborn. What was I like as a child? You were really playful and um, very, very in tune to um, people's feelings. And you were always aware of when somebody was not feeling good or not feeling feeling sad or anything like that. You were always able to tell no matter how. I mean, the minute you could talk, you were aware. And then as you got older, you could, you definitely were that way. So what is something that you feel people might misunderstand about me? Or what is something that you appreciate? or see differently in me? I think some people might misinterpret the fact that you're loud and very talkative and you're pretty quick with your mouth and, and different things like that and they might not realize that that's part of, you know, some stuff with ADHD. Um, but it's never malicious. It's just very, you have a lot of energy and sometimes people that don't respond well to that might um, be kind of maybe taken back but you're always just really exuberant and outgoing and so I think maybe people might think differently until they talk to you for five minutes and that's it that's all they need to know and they would know how you are how have I influenced your life well for starters I mean just having you be my first child which changed my life forever um, has influenced every single thing in it because of that um, I think that I'm inspired by you because you do have ADHD and it's always been something that you have had to work with from the age of five till now and you just always take it in stride and you always, always, always have your best foot forward. You get discouraged sometimes but you still stay at it. You have a really, really good work ethic when it comes to um, homework. Um, so just your dedication and your, your work ethic and just persevering through all that is really inspiring to me. Also, how you treat people. You still, from when you were a little kid to the way you are now, people call you Dr. Phil for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's also inspiring because I think that sometimes maybe I could learn to be a little softer or more aware of people or things like that because you know we all get really busy and caught up in our own things. So having you do that is like a kind of an... A, kind of stops me and makes me go, okay, you know what? Yeah, take it back a little bit. So what are your basic life philosophies or what do you, uh, what words do you live by? All right, so it's not really a philosophy or this or that, it's just a whole bunch of different things. And it kind of starts with, I've always told you guys to just try your hardest, try your best, no matter what it is, just try, do your best. And that's, the outcome is what it is. And I think you can't be faulted for trying. And it, that's for everything. Um, and I just, I guess my whole goal has always been to raise you and your sister to be happy, happy, healthy, well-adjusted adults. And that takes being kind to people, working hard, having a good work ethic, um, and just focusing on yourself and not comparing yourself to other people or your, your accomplishments or your downfalls to other people because they're not you and you're not them. And I think that it's important to just focus on your own thing and compete with yourself, make yourself better. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing because you'll never be them and they can never be you. So, yeah. So do you have any uh, final comments or last words? Um, I would say that it's, um, it's been a privilege to be your mom, mm -hmm. to, to be honest. Thanks. And um, 
Yeah. You've turned out and have exceeded my expectations on every level as a student, as a person, my son, my firstborn. Um, and I just, I'm looking forward to, to watching the rest of your life and um, seeing where you go and what you do and um, watching you grow and have your own life and your own family and, and just being able to someday have kids and see what that is like. Because you'll be changed forever. Love you. Love you too. Okay, so this is interview number two. This is Layla. Okay, so how do you know me? Um, I met you sophomore year through mutual friends. What was your first impression of me? Um, I thought you were super funny because you were just loud and yelling at everyone. So I was like, I need to be friends with you. What's something that you feel others might misunderstand about me? Um, you speak your mind and people may come, like, maybe think that, like, it comes off as rude, but I think you're just, like, a very vocal and honest person. How have I influenced your life? Um, at one point at MIDI, I felt like I was out of place and I didn't, like, find my group, but then you and another person made me feel, like, my worth and, like, found, like, what real friends are like, so you made me stay here. What words do you live by or what is your basic life philosophy? Um, treat everyone equally and like live, live your life because you only have one. So do everything and anything because you're going to die anyways. Do you have any final comments for me? Um, I love you. You're my best I love friend. You too. We're going to stay friends in college. I'm going to make it happen and I just cherish our friendship so much. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> okay, so this is interview number three. This is Vivian. Okay, so my first question is, how do you know me? <sighs> well, I know you because we go to the same school, but I like really know you because we went to South Africa together. Um, what was I like, or like, what was your first impression of me? I thought you were insane freshman year because in the cafeteria I'd always hear you yelling about something but like I wanted to be friends with you because like I thought you were funny. What's something that you feel others would misunderstand about me or um or what do you think they see differently of me when yeah. they first meet me? Um I think that they don't know how like sensitive a person you are or like how empathetic you are because you, like, you're really loud and like people don't understand you have like I definitely have like a softer side and like a like you're really really caring. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, how have I influenced your life? Um, I come to you about a lot of things, and you just know how to like not take things too seriously. You just like make me feel better about things, and I love you. Thank you. What is your basic life philosophy, or what words do you live by? Oh, I would say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Because, like, I don't know, like, obviously a lot of bad things happen to us, because, but I feel like there has to be a reason, and I think it's, like, to give us a thicker, a thicker skin. Mm. Do you have any final comments or last words for me? Javier's the goat, dude. <laughs> the goat. <laughs> Thanks, Vivian. Yeah.